quick recording here. Get set up. Okay, so what we're talking about here are indicators for charts. And basically, there are a variety of, of indicators that are out there. There are just a whole host of them from the very basic things like a moving average line where you just line up a 50-day or a 10-day or whatever it may be. And you can look at volume and all that and look at uh, things like MACD and stochastics. This is much different because what we really want to do and what we always wanted to look for was where is the sweet spot? Where can we actually find the level of... Uh, of, of, well, I would say, where's the volume? Where's the actual uh, levels of interest that are going on? So what we're really seeing here is that, uh, let me kind of move the slide a little bit. Okay. So when it comes to the overall uh, indicators that we have, we have something called autopilot. We have radar and we have altimeter. Now we use this airplane model, this, this kind of aerospace model, because I want you to think about the opportunity of areas that uh, have altitude pitch, where the things will break down, they fall, and you can kind of think of the, the middle line as a runway, if you will, and take off. I'll show you what I mean by that. Basically what we're really going to do here is to look to eliminate one side of the trade. So when you're looking at a, a position, you're looking at whatever stock or future or forex that it may be, you know, how do you really know what to do? How do you know whether you should be long, short, and not only that, when to get out, when to kind of say, okay, you know, this is something that is really moving in my direction, and where do I want to add to it? Essentially, you want to maximize your reward, limit risk, and again, find these very important areas of key support and resistance and where it's really going to fly. So that's basically the thesis behind all of these, and it makes it very easy because on two of them, the radar and the altimeter, you're really looking at the core and the underbelly of what's happening, kind of the engine. Autopilot brings those all together for you. So let's take a quick look at radar very quickly. And then again, we're going to look at this on a live chart. So in, in radar, what we're seeing here is that we're looking for, again, this identification of where is the support and where is the resistance, not by just simply drawing a line, not by simply just going and saying, okay, here's the trend line or here's the 50-day moving average. We want to know where are the pros buying and selling? Because if you think about it for a second, if the pros are buying and selling in that region, and if in fact you can piggyback along with them, what a great deal. Makes a lot of sense. If you know where they're no longer going to support a stock, you could say, I'm not going to long, longer going to support a stock either at that price. So we have this concept of market balance and imbalance that is going on. And basically, um, you know, what we're looking at is, is a, a situation where we have the ability to find um, things like fast zones. Uh, and fast zones are where a, th there's an area that is, is vacant of significance, of significant amount of volume. It, it's where there's just no trading really taking place. Well, how do you see that on a, on a traditional chart? It's very difficult. We're also looking for things called um, imbalance in slow zones. And th those horizontal slow zones are areas that you really don't want to be in. You, you don't want to really trade inside of there if you're trading. Now, obviously, from the consolidation, what you have is a breakout level. So you have this, this situation where you have a consolidation, you have a horizontal movement, and then when is it going to break? What's that exact price? And that's what this is going to really show you. All right, now, quickly going over the altimeter. Um, we're going to find what lower risk is, higher probability opportunities. We're going to find a essentially a blueprint. It's going to be a roadmap or a flight plan, if you will, to find out where am I going to look for those trades that are going to find a, a good amount of upside or downside quickly, and where am I going to then put things like where am I going to have my stops, where am I going to find where I'm going to take my profit out of this, and when should I actually add to the trades. Now, when you put the altimeter and the radar together, you get a nice view of all this. Now, autopilot, as I mentioned before, is basically a combination of all this. What it gives you is a, um, a look at the recent history of where things have been. You look back, you look, and, then, and then what you do is we look forward and find out where the potential is. Now, we use an algorithm, which is a mathematical model calculating where we're going to find, again, these directional biases. And we're going to find out where we're going to have the things like the stop loss and when you take profits. And from there, we said, well, what, what way can we design this to make it easy? Well, the old color coding comes into play. 
and it makes it very easy because what happens is now you'll be able to see exactly with a very clean green color where to buy uh, an orange is for example an exit a trade and a, um, a yellow may be a warning that something's coming up that you want to take a look at. Now one of the problems you have in a traditional sense is that when you look at for example well I like to use okay uh, trend lines okay so a lot of people use trend lines right so we use trend lines we draw a nice trend line on here and this is a chart of JC Penney and you say okay well the trend line is moving higher from September through uh, March and you take a look at this and you can say well that's very easy to discern and I can I can take a look at this area here that just just moves right up very smoothly and all that right okay well, what happens next what happens next is that we move and we have another one we have another little, little line down here uh, in August through September and then we keep going we can say okay it broke out of that and we went long and we can take a look over to the next side and we say well we're gonna go short over here well do those really work and those really uh, very much have a uh, you know any kind of a significance that really works I don't know but again keep on plotting these and what you can see is that we have in in these ranges over in March through April we have these breakdowns. Okay, that did work somewhat, but did you really catch it at the right time? The next time, and, and what was the real signal there? Wouldn't it really have had to come above the uh, like the thirty-seven fifty, thirty-eight dollar range before you would have possibly got back in because you had some resistance there? There's nothing really telling you that. And then what would you have done here, all the way over back in May when it dropped off a cliff? I mean, that would have been very difficult to to, to understand what to do there, right? So what you want to do is you want to have a, um, a time where you can really look for these things that are, are much more identical and you know you don't get trapped. Now here's what we have volume. Now volume you look at you look at on a horizontal basis, right? You look over across and you see that what's going on. Very difficult to understand. You do see that there is this volume situation where you saw a gigantic amount of volume back in uh, the middle of January. You know that was a big spike and something did occur there. It could have been earnings. It could have been an announcement. Uh, but then again, volume really just 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 waned from then on and, and there was really no nothing that really could tell you anything except for this very large volume spike here now when you look at the difference between this and what we're about to show you you're going to see that significantly there's going to be a, a different way to look at it because this is only one way looking the same way as a stock goes which is left to right okay and there's other things like uh, moving averages and convergence of moving averages and crossovers and things like that and a break of the 50 day. These all can work. These all can definitely work. But let's take a look. And these are just, you know, throwing these out. You got too many signals from Bollinger Bands. Kind of gets a bit confusing. These are all interesting to use, but these are not what I would say efficient and give you exact lines to, uh, lines in the sand of what exactly you should be looking for. Okay? So again, I can go through these and show you all these different spots that may be interesting to buy or sell. But they, again, they don't give you a real significant signal, particularly the one when you look at, for example, the, the thinning of the Bollinger Bands over in the February area. You know, when, when you get the thinning of the Bollinger Bands, something's supposed to break, but which way is it going to break? I mean, on one, one hand, you would say, well, it really hit the bottom of the Bollinger Bands, and I should be looking to buy at that point, right? But no, the stock just drifted lower and lower and lower, and it continued to, to sit along the lower Bollinger Band. So again, these are not as efficient. Now on the other hand, we have this altimeter. Now altimeter I mentioned gives you very easy to understand, very easy to look at, and very easy to read lines, levels. Okay, we have three levels. We have the green, which is basically the support. We have the cyan or blue, which is the key volume level. Now we took volume and turned it on its side, and I'll show you that in a second when we look at radar. And then you have the red, which is an area of resistance. Now resistance sometimes acts as both resistance or support, and support can act as resistance or support, right? Depending on which way directionally it's moving. Now let's take a look at the next thing. Let's take a look at um, whether price is inside. Now when you have prices inside these ranges, now let's take a look for example at the far right. Okay, let's look over here. This range over here. Now you see that we have a range for this is IBM from 196 to about 188. And the price stayed within that range all the way. Broke a little bit above in August, but then stayed below. We want to find when this price is not inside the range and when we can find that there's a gap 
or an open area. And that's when you see the opportunities really come in and be very beneficial to a, a stock. Inside the range again, here's another one. When it breaks out, what happens is you want to look to enter a position. And that worked out very nicely. You know, what happened is that you get this situation where at this point here in February and March, consolidation, continued consolidation, and then look, a break, that was your buy signal. And then what you did is you got this gigantic move up that was very nice again. And you look for these wider areas that will look for volatility. You look for the narrower areas that are much more condensed and less volatile. But when they break, that's when the that's when you attack. Now when you combine that with the radar, now this is where the volume is turned on its side. We're finding now that volume at price. The volume at price. Where is the volume coming in at what price? Traditionally, what you find is that volume simply is just a daily measure or a 60-minute or you know a weekly. What we're looking for is where are the key levels that we could find that volume will actually be uh, looking for a uh, we're looking for where is the the uh, components. So there's two things on this chart that you're looking at. The first thing is that you have the altimeter, which are the three lines we talked about. And then you have the radar. Now, the radar you can use exclusively as well. Now, I want to show you something very interesting. Yeah, this, is, this is, I think, really neat. This is the same chart in the same area where we saw the consolidation over in February, March. And look what happens here. Right above the level of this yellow line from the previous, um, from the previous radar, we'll call it. Okay, So we have different times of 30 days maybe 60 days, you can put whatever time frame you want on this, and how much of a, uh, a length you want to look back. So the look back is important here as well. So you look at this and you say, okay, well, I'm seeing that there's a lot of support right in the area of about 200, and that because the altimeter is giving me uh, a, a closely related um, lower level, the key support, and our highest uh, middle level, excuse me, which is our volume. And then when you start breaking here, you say, okay, well, that's interesting. And then you look here, there's a lot of volume that was right there, just right there, right at about the 204 level. Once that broke, it just flew up. Very easy to see what this is doing and how to look at this um, from a chart standpoint, whether you're using both of these at the same time or only one. For example, you could use just the radar to look at this, or you could look at the uh, altimeter just to look at this. You want to find areas that are lacking of support or resistance. We call those fast zones. There's another one here that I'll point out to you that's very interesting. And you can see it when you're looking at a chart this way very easily. Over in um, late June, look in this area here where if you look backwards, the radar has nothing here. The radar has nothing back in, uh, in the end of April. There's no price support here. There's possibly some price support that you can look back to in the 198 area. But once you broke down below the level of support, look how it flushed down quickly. You know, that was a good uh, 12 points right there. And then what happened is you saw there was support building again, and you could have said, okay, I'm going to move out of this position at this time. And again, with the autopilot, you'll see this much more clearly. So we talked about a couple of these indicators, talked about the ranges, talked about the danger zones. Possibly if you're long, you want to be looking at this if you're trading. Now, we'll go one step further. And one step further is that we're looking at all that stripped out. And now what you have in front of you is simply the algorithm saying, hey, these are the support, these are the resistance levels. Let's look for breaks of all these under certain conditions. And these are all programmable. You can, you can put in specific um, uh, uh, indicator values. And we give you some to start with. But you can put in levels. And you can put in look back periods. You can put, put in sensitivity. You can put how much of a risk you want to take from a stop loss standpoint. And if you take a look at this and just follow this along simply from the perspective of eyeballing colors. So we go back to the beginning of 13 on IBM again. And you can see there was a break, a yellow warning. as a break, get long. You got long here. And then you stayed long. And then you got a signal right here. See where the uh, cursor is here? that orange came up, which is a time to take your profits and move on. And then you got some mixed signals here because it was very choppy. You were in, you're out, etc. But then you broke again, and you're long because it's green. You were out because it came into 
a, a consolidation area, but you, then you got back into long. Again, this is daily. You can set this to 60 minute. You can set this to 240, whatever you, however you want to trade. And sometimes you're going to get this choppiness because it's starting to break. It's starting to, um, you know, give signals that it is breaking. You could, again, set that sensitivity. But then you got a short signal here. And look at that nice short. Short took you out uh, close to the low then popped you back into a long to pretty much grab most of the upside here. A little bit of choppiness inside of here because it was very volatile. And then you went short again. You can get the picture of what I'm talking about here. It gives you a really nice way to understand when it is that you can enter a trade, when you should exit. And again, it all depends on your particular level of um, risk that you want to take, the volatility, and the stocks, or whether you want to use uh, uh, futures or Forex or whatever else it may be. Okay, this is a trading algorithm. This is essentially a strategy that's wrapped up in an indicator so that you can have signals and you can do things like uh, put an alert on certain things that when it breaks that you'll be alerted to it. And there's a few other components to this as well that uh, you, you can look at. Basically, uh, color-coded. So you have a green buy signal, short signal is red, um, an entry alert is yellow. You get that throughout the day live intra-bar or whether, again, it's 60-minute or it's weekly. You get an intra-bar. So you know if something's about to occur, if you see that that's starting to move, you don't have to wait to the next day or the next bar to actually get in, which is really nice. You get an exit alert also, which is orange, and you get stops depending on, on where you set that. Now, what's really interesting, if you take a look at this chart again for a second, and we just use IBM as a, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a standard that you use. And I can show you this on many, many different charts. Very few, if none on this chart, magenta bars. You see that? There's no magenta bars, which means that you really weren't stopped out. What instead happened was you were taken out for profits most of the time, or at least you were taken out for very little uh, loss. It was very tight. You didn't get blown out where else you're holding something and it keeps on moving down against you and all of a sudden, you know, it keeps on moving against you and moving against you and then, you know, from there, you have to wonder, what do I do next? Where am I going here with this? You know, what's happening? So um, this gives you a really nice setup for all of that. Now, let me um, kind of, let me tell you first of all that you can get a uh, free trial for all these indicators. If you haven't done so already, you can go over. There's a, there's a link at the bottom here. And what I'll do is I will uh, give you the link so you can see this really easily. I'll put it in the chat here for you. There, it's in the chat for everybody. Um, and uh, make sure that you open up a new window so you don't leave this particular um, thing because we're going to talk about some of the, the live charts here in a second. And, um, you know, many of you trade either futures or you trade uh, um, you trade individual stocks. And, and this works for all of them because it's really just price action that we're dealing with here. We're really dealing with the, the essence of, of what's the price uh, action going to show, show us and, and where do we enter and exit. So let's take a look. Let's kind of go over some real charts here, okay? And let me switch this over to that. Hopefully you can see that. Take a look. Okay, so this is actually what the indicators look like uh, live. Now, what you're looking at right now is the ES. Now, this is today, and you know what happened today was that uh, the uh, ES went um, down about 30 points on the jobs number and then miraculously started heading higher for some unknown reason. But what would you have done? Well, uh, this is a daily chart, and if you look at this for a second, what you're finding is that in this daily chart, you are seeing a basic um, a, a look at this from all the indicators entirely. But let's strip these out a little bit. Let's go one at a time real quickly. And let's take a look here. Let's take that one off too. Okay. So that's what a regular chart would look like. Just a very simple, it's a very simple chart. Okay. And uh, what we can do here is we can put these back on here. Here. So there's your altimeter. Okay. So what you're finding here is on the altimeter is you're seeing these levels that would be interesting to start thinking about getting long or getting short. And again, this is daily. But let's go one step further. Let's take this down to maybe uh, a 60-minute chart. And let's kind of spread this out. This is all on TradeStation. Let's spread this out. Give you a big view of this. 
Well, you can see what's happening here is that there was this very significant consolidation that happened. There was some breakdowns and all. But if you were to look at this, it would be very choppy because a lot of this happened after hours, you know, in, in, the, in the evenings. This is really the start of the day uh, right about here. And now what you're finding is that right now this thing is breaking out for, again, some unknown reason. What's happening is that there's a breakout. Now, you should have been getting long after we hit the uh, 1653 around there, somewhere around there. Um, and what you would find is that if you throw on the, the for example, the, the radar, and that should come up in a second. Put that up there. There you go. So if you put on the radar, you have very little volume that extends lower. And this is starting to go past the screen already. And then where you see a break is above, oops, sorry about that. You see a break above the, uh, you know, 16, uh, what do we got here, 1658 level. And when that happened, you start seeing enormous amounts of move. Now, this is a 60-minute. You can tie these all together. So you tie together the 60-minute and maybe look at the longer term, 240-minute, uh, uh, maybe you want to look at 30. I don't recommend using less than 30. But this is how you can find where those breakpoints are. And if you look at this going backwards, you can very easily. Now, the color co combination on this is just simple red, green, up and down. Okay. What you want to be focusing in on is where are the areas that there's very limited volume, and that's where you see these things fall down. You can see what happened today was, again, in the early part of the day, you saw this tremendous move right here on this bar in the early morning. And what happened is that you had a, a situation where it dropped right through. It managed to turn around and come back, of course, but it dropped right through because there was no volume there. And if you look across to your left, just keep looking to your left there. Just kind of scan to the left. And what you find is that there's very little uh, uh, support anywhere on this. Now, again, why it turned around, why it went down, news-driven, whatever it may be, but it gives you an idea where you should be looking. Now, the same thing on stocks. We have, uh, this is what the actual, um, the, the, uh, when you get any of the trials, this is what it will look like when you download it from the Trade Station Strategy Network. Okay, this is the screen that you'll see of the, the workspace. So you can take a look at this. This is, uh, we give you the S&P 100 here, and, you know, we could pick something. Let's pick something with a reasonable price that has some volatility here. Now, let's look at Disney, for example. Lows very quickly. Now, <clears throat> let's look at Disney on a daily. Maybe. We can pull it up. There we go. All right, there's Disney on a daily. Now, when you're looking at this, this is a, a bigger picture. A lot of people like to do swing trades and, and find out where they can actually put their money in if it is, in fact, uh, swinging one direction or the other. And I'm going to overlay this right now. I'm going to put the, the, the um, autopilot on here because I think that's the one that you really want to take a look at from here. We'll color code this to give you a much better picture here. Okay, so that's what it looks like right there. There's the, the autopilot. And you can see starting back in May, there was a breakout above a key level. Uh, that was actually in April, and then it it just it just kept on going. There was no, they didn't take you out anywhere. What it actually happened here was, which is really interesting, you did get a magenta bar here because it came down very quickly. But still, you're talking about from 60 to about 66, about 10 percent gain right there. Then you had some short positions and some choppiness and some, you know, depending on your settings. Again, it's all depending on your settings. But you can see how this kept you safe. You really didn't get beaten up anywhere very badly. And what happens here is that the autopilot will essentially give you the directional moves above and beyond with a few other goodies that are mixed in there to give you where the sweet spots are from the buy and the profit uh, zones. Now, you can look at this, and if we, if we look at this once again at, uh, on a different level, let's take a look at these, some people call this a double top maybe in, in, in uh, the June through August standpoint, so that's something, but still, you were long here. You got out somewhere right about here at about 66, so really not too much of a takedown. You got rid of all this choppiness and this dipping here, and you know maybe kind of you went short here, but when it turned around, you got out right at, at, at this level here. And then what happened was that you uh, stayed stayed again um, in, uh, out of it. Kind of it did break for a second, but it was a false breakout, so you just, again, took down a little bit. So what this is doing is essentially giving you the opportunity but pulling you out if it doesn't work. Now, again, once this is really important. It all depends on what particular um, settings you put in here. But this does give you that. Then you went short, and, and you were short for a while, uh, moved out of it here, went short again. And that short was pretty much an even trade recently, actually through today. Today, if you see the orange here on the end, 
is when it actually pulled out and said, hey, you know what, this is, you got to clean this up. Caterpillar is probably another interesting one to take a look at. Uh, very volatile, but, you know, you had these nice dr drops that you got, took you out uh, back in uh, this area here. Uh, you should be seeing that uh, right about now. So you can take a look at uh, Caterpillar right there. And then you can see that it did get you back into long, took that whole ride up, moved you down right about there. Uh, over in uh, mid mid um, uh, mid uh, what would that be uh, mid August, um, and then you can do it for forex too. Here's forex here. You can take a look at the uh, a lot of people trade the euro, for example. Let's wait for that to come up for a second. There's the euro, and uh, you can see this is a, a bit more bumpy. But look at the uh, great opportunities, and really, just looking at let's take a look at this. Just looking at uh, for example the autopilot only. You know, you just look at the colors and look at the direction. Look where you would have pulled your money out. Green, you'd been long. Orange, you pull out. Uh, red, you go short. Orange, you pull out. Look at that. There's some nice profits in there. And you can even go back even further and take a look at how the trends work so nicely. Again, you can do this on any time frame as well. You know, some people like to trade currencies on a much quicker basis because they are fast moving. So you can see that, hey, you know what? This, you, you were short here uh, back in, uh, let me take this 60 minute. Let me kind of take this, um, an arrow here. So, you got short right about there uh, back in uh, the end of the day, uh, 9.4. And then uh, you, you closed your position here for a couple of points there. You went long. That long then reversed, and you got an alert to go short. You got short somewhere, uh, somewhere along here. And then you closed your position all the way down here uh, back at the, uh, the 16, about, uh, where was that here? Let's see. Uh, at the end of the day on the 5th, and there's some bobbling around, et cetera. And then you got a warning. You went long at 131.3, and then uh, just got pulled out of the position recently. Uh, the last, uh, however long that was, uh, last 60 minutes. But again, also people like to use, uh, for example, 240 minutes, and uh, you know they like to use a variety of different. But this is all in there. And also, when you, the other thing I'll mention is when you get the actual indicators, you get a full user manual and a guide with it. Plus, we have some videos on the website over at Trigger Charts. Dot com. So you can see all of that in, a, um, in, in one complete package. And the nice thing is that you can actually get a lot of this for free. So, so right here, I'll mention to you again that the opportunity for you to get a, um, you know, the free trial is, is available to you. You get a 10-day free trial. Um, we have a special offer also that if you give us a review on the TradeStation Network, we'll give you a 30-day extension of that trial, so I think that's a nice thing because I think you're going to really like this. This is something that really does work, and I think you'll find very useful. And we would put these indicators against any other indicator because I think they're that good and will help you out your trading out that much. The other thing is, you can get these these for free. The basically these indicators can be paid for by TradeStation. They have a special rebate program that they have. And let me give you if you if you're interested in this, basically uh, you can get this. Uh, we're going to put this in the chat for you, and there it is. Uh, that's over on TriggerCharts.com. Just if you do, if you are looking for possibly getting this rebate and uh, looking at, um, you know, what can I get for this? Up to three thousand dollars. The cost of our indicators can be covered by TradeStation. So I think that's really a very, um, I think it's a pretty good deal. These are the other seminars that are coming up. Now we're going to get a lot more into the details of these on these days coming up. We're going to see really a, a very um, important look at each one of these. So we're going to do the altimeter and how to exactly fine tune it and how to give you all the inputs that you need to use this. Then we're going to do the radar and we're going to give you, you know, how to use the altimeter and the radar together. Sign up for these, make sure that you register because you know you can't get in if you don't register, etc. And um, take a look at all these. But then we're going to talk about all the different products together and how you can develop a trading strategy with this. I, I would ask you or even challenge you, get the free trial from TradeStation, okay? And, and you could clearly see, I think, how this works and how you'll be benefited by this. And if you want, there's a link that I just passed through again uh, on the different events that are going to be taking place um, moving forward. So we talked about the overview today. That's really what I want to cover in the time that we had. And um, you know, any questions you have, et cetera, you know, just send us an email. Go to the website. I'll give you a quick con one more link if you don't mind. 
And by the way, if you do put in uh, in the registration your mobile numbers, we will text you of updates of what's happening with the webinars. And so you don't, you don't forget and you'll have a reminder. And we do send you plenty of emails to make sure that you don't forget what's going on uh, and when it is. So um, there, there's really the, the whole approach that we have to the, the trading and um, you know, all the things that you can do with it in terms of how you will um, operate with uh, utilizing these. And I think this is something that really, like I said, can be used very um, uh, efficiently and really help your trading. Because if you're in a situation where your trading is, you know, sometimes um, let's say you have um, questionable um, results and you don't know what's going on. Um, you know, well, we can give you a little bit of help with this, I think. So uh, let's take a look at this here. Uh, I have some questions, I think, that came in. So let me see what I got here. Okay. All right. Everybody's good? Everybody's good? Okay, no questions. All right. Well, we're going to end it right there, and I want to thank you for joining us. Again, that recording will be up. We'll give you the uh, links to get there uh, very shortly. Uh, we'll have it up in the next day or two. So thanks for joining me today. And this is where we're going to end it.